In this video, we're gonna take a look at my new crankshaft design. We're gonna see little tidbits like how I improved my connecting rod and what I did to make my camshaft more reliable. But to start out with it, I'm going to satisfy the claim that I made in the title of this video and show you the time lapse of this engine running for 10 minutes. So skip past that part if you don't wanna watch, but I'm super proud of it. This engine is more reliable than it's ever, ever has been. So let's jump right in. That was it, 10 minutes. I'm super proud of that. Um, it could run for longer. I just need to find out what it is that stopped it in the end. I'm not sure, but it could be an intermittent camshaft bearing catching that if it happened on both bearings at the same time in the same cycle, could have stopped the engine. Um, I looked for other things like the crankshaft separating or um, evidence on the pin or on the connecting rod or in the camshaft itself. Um, didn't find anything, but I'm sure it will present itself at some point here in the near future. So super proud of that. And what you're seeing right now is a shot that I did the night before where it ran for about four minutes. And here's what the problem was at the end of that run. The failure wasn't because of the crankshaft. It was camshaft again. <laughs> This bearing started to pull out. The camshaft started to separate from the middle. I have some improvements in mind for camshafts, but that was all very reliable. What a great crankshaft. So I was able to improve my camshaft design quite a bit, put some uh, Technic pins in there and used fewer axles going through the center of it. And it worked great. Once I installed it on the engine, that gave me the 10 minute run. But let me show you some other components that I improved on this engine. So we're just gonna take the head off here. I have to loosen up each of the head studs that, or head bolts that hold the head onto the block. And the head lifts up, lifts off, just like so. And there you see the cylinder inside. We're gonna take the cylinder off. It just is held on by four tiles. And once that is off, we got to carefully remove it. Keeping in mind that the piston is still inside of it until we take it out. Now you can see my rotating assembly. A couple things I want to point out to you. I know you've, if you've watched my other videos, you've seen my wrist pin piston before. Here's my upgraded rod. I had to lengthen it a little bit because I increased the stroke of this engine. And the other thing I did with the rod was make a bunch of changes to the big end. So let's just take the, the nuts off of the bolts, as you know, I like to think of them. And when I take this, 
rod cap off, I think maybe the best way to do it would be to pull the whole bolt out, or at least through the cap, so that it's all the way to the rod side. Well, I think these rods are more practical than my older design. And there goes the cap. So something I can show you while we're looking at the cap is I had to remove all the sharp edges from this area here because now that I have seams, let's take the rod out the rest of the way out. Now that I have seams on my pin, I don't want any sharp edges like that, for example, to catch on that seam. So I had to remove a couple of bracket parts like these ones, which had a sharp edge and replace all the sharp edge parts with round edged parts. And now, as long as I keep the rod cap a little bit separated from the rod itself, if you can see what I'm emphasizing there. Then, if it's like that, instead of being like that, the rod is loose enough on the pin that it just floats on there so nicely, so low friction. Now, the thing you've been waiting for, the crankshaft itself. You'll notice that I went from a one single counterweight design, well, emphasis on weight. I had a um, crank web, but I just didn't really have weight on the left and the right, or the left and the right side of the connecting rod. And I've gone to a double counterweight crank. And here's where the magic is at. So one side of my pin is actually just kind of loose and floating in there. I had to use an upside down building technique, but what you see there, if I don't drop parts on the floor, is I just have it built upside down. So that is able to connect onto the other side there. And these plates are what's doing all the structure of my pin. So yes, there's a little bit of deflection if you can see that. There's the ability for it to have torsional deflection or twisting, but the ability for the pin to separate from the crank web now is pretty much gone. The hard part was this seams and the edges, potential edges catching on the rod between these parts. But I showed you earlier how I got around that. And my goodness, I've had this crankshaft spinning faster than I ever had a crankshaft spinning on this engine. So I'm really proud of that. This engine, it turns out, is now reliable and I can't wait to see what comes next for it. Maybe a head rebuild, maybe um, whatever it takes to get it running for, let's say 15, 20, 30 minutes at a time, whatever number seems satisfactory for having it just sitting there running at a Lego show. So thanks guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.